Middle East is a significant market for Australian livestock exports, and it's important that Australians understand the work the industry is carrying out in this market to improve animal welfare standards. We're over here gathering footage of MLA's Welfare Improvement Program to show the community back home. Images you'll be able to see on the Livestock Export Truth YouTube channel, which receives some 2,500 hits a week. While we're in Egypt, we thought we'd also file a story for Feedback TV. Up until 2006, this market was an important export destination for Australian beef cattle. But in that year, Australia suspended live exports to Egypt until the welfare of the animals could be guaranteed. Well, it's taken about three years, but once again the live cattle trade has resumed. The key to that happening has been a closed system at the port of Sokna, one that integrates port facilities, a feedlot and processing plant. You've got 100% control. The animals don't leave your sight. From the time they leave the ship to the time they get to the feedlot, you've got them under your control. Beginning with a specially constructed 800 metre walkway, a direct link between the port and the feedlot. There's no, no rushing, there's no turning around, there's no having to push them or anything. Generally they're just trotting away out into the desert like they're going home. For the trade to reopen, the feedlot had to be built and managed to satisfy the highest standards of animal welfare and efficiency. Same goes for the abattoir. In fact, it was built to qualify for EU accreditation, but also with local considerations in mind and remains the only acceptable slaughterhouse for Australian cattle in Egypt. It's Egypt's best um, cattle slaughter facility and, uh, and that's because it's got the proper equipment for handling, for restraining the animals. Any facility in Egypt that Australian livestock are sent to will have to comply with the same sort of standards as we're seeing here at this place. But for the trade to reopen, MLA had to be able to show that the system is indeed closed. That's where Australia's National Livestock Identification System comes in. All the cattle are scanned onto the vessel in Australia, so we have a, a, uh, a record of, of exactly what goes on. The cattle are then scanned into the feedlot here, straight off the ship into the feedlot, direct at the port. And, uh, and then they're, they're in the feedlot here and then they're scanned into the abattoir. So we have a record at each stage that assures that the cattle are not going elsewhere and that they remain here within the closed system. The investment in training and infrastructure here at Sokna has set a benchmark for animal welfare assurance for the live export industry in the Middle East. Opening new markets and keeping them open protects the Australian live export industry from fluctuations in demand at other destinations. In fact, the timing of the Egypt market reopening could not have been better. When you have, have a market such as Indonesia, which has gone absolutely gangbusters for quite a while now, and there's been a bit of a softening in that market, if we hadn't had the opportunity to move livestock into Egypt, that impact on the Australian industry would have been, a lot, a lot, would have been felt a lot harder. The meat which comes from Sokna might be from Australian animals, but by then it's Egyptian beef, and that's how it's branded. But back in Cairo, MLA's been working with one of the most cutting-edge food retailers. Gourmet Egypt is one of the standout successes in marketing Australian meat products and it reflects the changing retail demands of this emerging market. The Middle East North African region was always seen as being a commodity market, a market that took the frozen six-way cut mutton, the manufacturing beef, that type of product. But this is just a testament to how the market is evolving and how it's evolving at a rate of knots as well. Even before Gourmet Egypt opened for business, MLA was offering advice on training, processing, packaging and presentation. The managing director is Jalal Abagazele, and it's his business that is now staking its reputation on high quality Australian product. When the home delivery worked really well in the beginning, I figured that having a shopping experience would have to work. Gourmet Egypt now operates a delivery service, an online store, and two retail outlets in upmarket suburbs at opposite ends of Cairo. And the business is building month by month. Australian meat really helps us because of, because of the consistency, because of the, you know, the reliability and the, and the stability. It's, uh, it's made that possible. There's a lot more wealth in this region than there are in other parts of the world. And customers now are saying, well, we want to buy a higher quality product. We're willing to pay for it. The growth in this market, in particular in Egypt, has been astounding. 
I think one of the most impressive things about gourmet Egypt for me is that here we are in Cairo, which is frankly one of the most disorganised cities you could ever hope to experience, and yet here inside the shop you could be in a sophisticated gourmet shop just about anywhere in the world. It's a real credit to Galal and his team, but also to the advice they've received from Meat and Livestock Australia. The programs we have with Jalal, although they are immediate now, they will have a long-term impact on the market. We're here to affect change. The support we give Jalal is no different to the other support that we would give any other retailer in the region, or importer for that matter. But I suppose it's wonderful working with Jalal because he's passionate and committed. But the majority of the work we undertake is with training of his retail staff on how to cut and present the product better, on his collateral development, what messages should we be putting up around Australian meats. What are the messages about our halal system? What are the messages about our livestock traceability systems that are consumer friendly? And working with these agencies and these marketing people to really drive, you know, if you like, this brand Australia more effectively in the market.